these outdoorsy men's relationship to nature mirrors their relationship to women. It's all about dominating. It's about violence. It's about being a parasite and exploiting. And that's why all of these films and, you know, books and TV shows that are dedicated to telling these stories of white men going and conquering new places in the outdoors is absolutely not only like continuation of white supremacy culture in the colonizer mindset, just feeling entitled to everything, you know, just, oh, I want that. I'm going to go over there and take it. And it doesn't matter who I hurt or what I hurt while doing so because it's mine. That's the entitlement that is at the root of whiteness, white supremacy culture. And you know, it's all rooted into capitalism and misogyny and stuff. And that's why movies like this drive me crazy. Men going out there and doing crazy things, putting their life in danger, knowing full well that the people who are gonna have to pick up the pieces if they fail are women, not caring about the history behind these places and all do it, doing it for their ego, for their escapism, their refusal to, to heal their trauma or deconstruct these systems of oppression that live inside of them. And one of them being dominating women and even mother nature. Now I've been doing um, a few videos on this dude and his obsession with, you know, conquering waves and the way he spoke about it in his interviews and in the movie is literally, it is so, Schmegualized. It, it is so clearly rooted in like purity culture and like taming women. I mean, honestly, and I know this may be a, seem like a stretch, but what that abusive man that I dated was absolutely a misogynist, clearly. And I remember seeing so clearly how much his whole thing was about dominating people and dominating everything. We went um, horseback riding and I had always thought that he really respected animals, but he didn't. He respects animals that are like domesticated, that he has control over. And the way I saw him treat a horse to break that horse, I was like, oh my God, that's what he's doing to me. <laughs> because I was like a wild free, you know, like kind of nomadic person, like an adventurer, like a no, he was the first man I ever dated at the age of 36. And I think he took great pride in breaking me. And so many of these men, that is what they do. Especially these men who come from a lot of trauma and who've not ever questioned any of this. They see a woman living her best life and they're like, that right there, I'm jealous of that. I want that. So I'm gonna destroy it. And that is so much the mindset of these outdoor dudes when it comes to nature. For instance, that surfer dude, he was obsessed with doing things that no one else had done. Do you see how like that's a very like, oh, I want to deflower a virgin mentality? Obsessed with doing things that no one else had done. I mean, even the way he talks about waves, it was a wave that wasn't consider considered rideable. That's why he was attracted to it. No one else could ride it. So like one of the, I mean, I've been hearing about this dude for forever. You know, Mallory, the guy who did the first go to summit Everest. And you know, we worship him because he died doing what he loved. But when asked why, because it's there. Connection here between grape culture, purity culture, um, and the, like whiteness and men's version, men's view on women's bodies and consent. So many men do not care what we want. They don't even see us as human. They don't even consider us. They want what they want. And if they can't have it, they're going to take it. I'm going to show you my dog. Oh, he's asleep. It's the same. I mean, obviously like a mountain isn't a human, but that's a very white perspective. How do I know that? I don't know that. The way that, that, that these men treat nature. And then a lot of women too, like a lot of white women in the outdoors, I have really had to change my relationship to the outdoors. I started to see that the way that I looked at nature when I was going climbing and all that stuff was a very like white male perspective about it being about individualism and a personal challenge and like me doing this thing because I want to do it other than why or who does this impact? I mean, so many men still don't even understand what consent is. If they can't get an outright yes, they will do anything to lie and manipulate and coerce to get what they want. And they will justify all of it in their head the same way they do with nature. And yet the difference here is that we're starting to see even though it was normalized in movies for so long, especially as a Gen, X, Gen Xer who grew up with Porky's, 16 Candles, Revenge of the Nerds, no women's consent wasn't even considered. And then that still happens today. They're just, you know, a little bit more smooth about that message. At the end of the day, men will, men literally justify anything to themselves because they want what they want and they don't care about anyone but themselves. That has, is how they have been socialized under patriarchy. 
and under white supremacy culture and capitalism, which is obsessed with the individual rather than the collective. But who pays the price of what these individuals get? The Guardian had a really great article recently about how in the rock climbing world, which is a community I'm a member of, but I don't really do it as much anymore, how um, having to come to some hard truths about ourselves, that these people who, I mean, so many of us in the climbing community have worshiped for so long, have had a, um, not so great approach to nature and that this has been encouraged all along since you know climbing which is a very white male dominated sport since it became big it has had men people doing stuff like this oh i didn't know that was a sacred something oopsie that none of us really i mean we're starting to now but i know that nobody was talking about this when i got into it like over 20 years ago is that all the places that we're climbing were stolen and that overall it is a not a sustainable sport because part of the, like the uh, the appeal is climbing new places red pointing things which means you're the first person to climb that route well i mean i'm sorry but that is not a sustainable model at a certain point there's nothing left to climb even if there is stuff left to climb it's not ours we do not we're not entitled to access to it and there's no acknowledgement that most of the places we're climbing were places that the indigenous communities were were pushed out of i mean i remember watching this movie in the gunks when i lived there and the gunks is a very big climbing town valley uprising and i think lynn hill was there i forget there was like big climbers were there for that premiere and i just remember like you know, thinking they were all so cool the more i started learning about our, the history of colonization i started thinking like god what we are really worshiping like privileged white people living in cars acting like teenagers so that we can like you know and it's like feels like it's like fighting the man but actually we're not we're literally doing the man's bidding we're just not participating in maybe consumerism as much in terms of things we're still absolutely consuming outdoor spaces in a way that is reckless entitled harmful with zero acknowledgement of the impact that any of that has on the communities around them for instance in yosemite one of the things that that climbers should talk about every single time they make a movie about climbing in yosemite is this history it's been called out that none of these films recognize the park's creation history including the sa state sanctioned mariposa Battal Batt battalion systemic burning of native villages and food stores displacing families and their homes i never knew that till i read this today and what they say in this uh, guardian article is if climbers really want to up their game but, you know climbing needs to include a way to enact restorative and social justice um so i want to draw attention to this amazing article i just read today so this was in the alpinist magazine but it's free if you just google this title and this is another reason why we need indigenous women at the center of every conversation about the outdoors this article is so good please go read it he talks about how inaccessible climbing is to indigenous communities especially for women two spirits femmes who are not safe in the outdoors also because um of government policy and pushing indigenous people into urban areas. She talks about the laws that also don't um, protect indig indigenous women in general, but she, I mean, she breaks down, I don't have time to go into all this. Please go read it for yourself. Also that most of the people who attack indigenous women, femmes and um, two spirit are usually non-native per uh, predators, perpetrators. One of the things I love about this, she also draws into the fact that women in general don't feel safe. That being in the outdoors, a very empowering experience for us, which is one reason why I think I got into it. I could control my danger. Like, honestly, th this summarized my, it, for me so well. I didn't even realize that. It was empowering because that's the one place where I feel like I have a little bit of control of how much of my survival and how, but that's so much different. Black, indigenous, other women of color, but especially for black and indigenous women, femmes and two spirits, because they do not have the protection that a white woman has. She even goes into Gabby Petito, Petito and, and the statistics around that, and how those cases of indigenous women never get this kind of coverage. So one of the things that nature does do, like she says, being outdoors and enjoying nature gave her that feeling of empowerment and feeling free. But the access to those feelings are often only available to white people, particularly ones with money. She points out mountaineering narratives written in settler colonial mentality, often focused on protagonist struggle with the element, the heroic suffering against odd conquests instead of harmony. Anything in the outdoor, climbing, surfing, mountaineering, should not be about conquering. But that is most men's mindset. 